Anya Nicole Kapugit, that's my groupmate Mary Rose Obra, over there. Uh, but unfortunately, our other groupmate could not be here, so I'm here to present to you our thesis, Tung Tung River Microbats, Testing a Heart Trap Design. So, bats belong to order Chiroptera, but and it's divided into two suborders, Megachiroptera and Microchiroptera. Now, it's not their size that makes them dif that divides them. It's actually what they eat. So, in Megachiroptera, these are your fruit-eating bats. And then, in Microchiroptera, their main food is insects. So, here's a picture of both. This one is a megabat. But, oh, and this one's a microbat. So if you notice their eyes, um, you'll notice that their eyes are bigger than their ears. And it's quite opposite for the microbats. So our group decided to focus on microbats since no one has done a study of it in the Tung Tung River. Um, the only study was made was for fruit-eating bats. So as I've said earlier, their diet consists of insects. But there are some species that prefer to eat uh, sorry, small mammals, fish, birds, and amphibians. But a more interesting species likes to eat, or rather drink, blood. Now, they don't turn people into vampires as pop culture as apparently brainwashed kids. But they might give you rabies, so careful. Um, the reason that their ears are so big is because they use this tool called echolocation where they emit sound and when a sound hits something or like an insect, an insect, it bounces back to them to locate where the prey is. They're also very good in fertilizing the soil. Their guano is mined in caves every year and this actually makes their habitat disturbed which apparently is happening all over the Philippines now which is why they're getting their populations getting more dense. So our objectives in the study was first to test a heart trap that we built based on Dr. Jody Sadlock's design and of course to make an initial survey in the Tung Tung River. So let's dig a little deeper. Why should we study bats? What's the point? One is that there are significant components of a food web. And this food web is important in any ecology, ecosystem, sorry. So although it's not shown, bats are also are in the middle. They're, they eat the primary consumers, but they're also eaten as protein for other animals like snakes and other raptors. So they also regulate the insect population and they do us a very special favor by controlling would-be pests. Um, an insect is only concerned as a pest if there's too many of them and they prove destructive rather than helpful. So in one night a bat can eat 1,000 insects in an hour. And they save farmers billions of dollars by controlling those pests. But unfortunately, nowadays, most farmers think that they're, they are the pest rather than helping. So our protocol in this study is first we had to build a heart trap. We studied it and then we got the materials for it. And then when it was constructed, I'll show you how we assemble it. So these are the parts when they're not um, assembled. So we start off with the bottom corners being connected to a horizontal side. Then we place the vertical sides. Then add the top corners and the upper horizontal side. After that, we attach the lower and upper banks. So. Unfortunately, it's not shown in the picture, but this is where fishing line is um, connected. 
Then we attach the legs and finally the catch back and then it falls. So once we're done with building the harp trap, we can now go to sampling. So we first looked for sites along the river. And our criteria was that it has to be, it has to have vegetation on both sides that creates a tunnel-like space. So this is the part of the river. This after it's here. not okay. shown. And we decided to stay in one side because one, it's pretty safe for us since we're all girls and there are settlements along the river. This is what it looks like from inside the river. So it does create a tunnel like this. And it's, the place is near the home of a construction foreman of the school. So that makes it a lot safer for us. Sorry. Um, once that was done, we can now we proceeded to the collection of bats. So we set the trap up, isolated for two to three hours, and then we check it. So the nicer advantages of a harp trap is that it doesn't stress the bat or the person entangling the bat, because all they do is they fly into the net, they fly into the, the fishing line, and they fall down to the catch bag where they, make, they climb up the plastic flaps and they make a temporary cave, quote unquote, in the catch bag. So once we've caught our bats, we proceeded to lab processing, where we caught their morphometrics. These are the equipments. And then we Proceed to get the weight, sex, and morphometrics of the bats. Um, using those and their facial features, we, we can identify the bat. The bat. <laughs> and we have to preserve at least five species. Five of each species, sorry. We also collected muscle tissue for the DNA war coding in UP. So we first, of course, killed the bat. It would be very cruel to cut out a piece of muscle from a live bat. So we, just, we killed the bat by placing it in a ultra-low freezer. To make, after, after 30 minutes, we decided to take the bat out. That doesn't hurt the bat, because they immediately go to sleep, and they don't feel anything afterwards. <laughs> So once the DNA is taken, um, they just, they extract the DNA and then it's amplified. So here's a flow chart. Of once the DNA has been amplified, it is then sequenced. Unfortunately, UP does not have a sequencer, so they send it to Malaysia for it to be sequenced. Once it's been sequenced, it's sent back and they can upload it into the site. Um, this is what the barcode looks like. So after the DNA barcoding, we proceeded to preserve the voucher specimens. Um, this was also done in UP Diliman, in the Institute of Biology. Um, so as I said earlier, we killed the bat by placing it in the ultra low freezer. This is what it looks like. The bats are here. It's this part, this little bag. And we remeasure the bat just in case you were wrong in the field. There. And then we rinse the bat with soapy water. And then we place them in a container filled with 75% solution of formalin. So this is our finished products. <laughs> Not exactly products, but you get the picture. So this is a Gantt chart. We started in August, and then we finished off here in April. So our results is that the hard prep that we built was successful. The species of the bats that we got from the river is Myotis mergola, otherwise called the Whiskered Myotis. This is the 
measurements that we got from the bats from the river. And this is the accepted ranges in literature, from literature. Um, if you'll notice, spe specimen number four is rather larger than the rest. Um, we don't know why they're larger, but when we examine the facial features of the bat, it the, it seems to be ano, um, Myotis and Maricola when we compare it to the other specimens. Our recommendations for the study is that the next st researchers will have to have another heart trap to um, sorry uh, uh, to have better results so they can have more trapping nights and this is a um, prediction of ours. These are the species we hope to, cut, to find in the river also. We based it from where it's found and what habitat it frequents. But we're not saying that the other bats cannot be found in the river. These are just um, hopes of ours. Um, our references and our acknowledgments. Thank you, that's the end of my... So, any query on the microbox? Yes, Dr. Nina Engel. <laughs> so, I'd like to congratulate you, Nicole, and your group mates for fabricating a heart trap. Um, as you mentioned, um, heart traps are, are very good at catching microbats, and those are highly undersampled in the Philippines. Can you tell us a bit more for the benefit of the rest who may be interested in using this technique for? catching bats on how you made the heart trap and how difficult it was? Um, when we started, because there were some, when we had it made, there were, we didn't know how to use it. So technic so we researched and when we defended at UP, um, Ms. Marisol Pedregosa, as she's here somewhere, <laughs> um, she told us to make the lines, the layers, Double, or it should be four. So that's why we. That's why it's a small specimen size. So because we had a hard time from the start. Then when we, when she told us that it has to be more than one, we eventually got samples that we needed. So. I'd like to add a bit more to that. And for the benefit of institutions who'd like to do the similar studies, the heart trap design is with us from Dr. Sedlock, and I'm sure she'll, she'll be more than willing for us to share, but I'll ask her permission first, just the same. So it's a PDF file, several pages. It's a blueprint, actually, on how to make one. Uh, what they did, uh, fortunately for me, they had money. So we looked for a machinist. We looked for a machinist who, in, who made the trap for us. So. It was originally intended to be in aluminum, but it's very expensive, so we, they used uh, stainless steel. I think the cost of the trap... 7000 Okay. And your groupmates haven't paid? They'll pay now. So it's 7K. Uh, po. So it's, it's a matter of finding the materials, looking for a machinist. We can help via email, chat, how to interpret Dr. Sedlock's design. We close the question for this part. It's a signal here to close. So the last paper is entitled